Hey everybody, how we doing? How's everybody doing? Um, yeah, so y'all just sand, saw me sand uh, the surface of these, uh, I'm sorry, the speed board. Um, probably gonna have to go back over it. Um, just because I am a bit of a, you know, trying to perfect it. Let me just shut this window actually. There we go. I had to open the windows to get some cross ventilation for the, uh, the sawdust, sanding dust, whatever. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd just kind of sand this and talk about what's been going on. So yeah, I don't know. Okay, let me just, I don't know, I guess start last week. So last week, um, my mom rented a space for the RV for uh, for the month of March. So uh, I went down there with her to get her set up and whatnot. And then I was there from what, Tuesday? And then I came back on, I believe, Saturday. So, yeah, I was gone for a few days. Uh, me and Otis were down there. And, uh, oh, hello. So, while I was there, um, or before I went, I tried to get, Otis has been on a steroid for his cough. Um, so I tried to make it, a, or to get a refill for that before we went out of town. Because, you know, it's about three hours away. So, it is definitely out of town. So, um... And they were like, well, you know, we need to check him again because steroids can really mess with organ function. So they were like, we need to just do his blood work again and see how he's doing. So yesterday he went to the vet. That's why he was up here. Um, I was coming up to help Caleb take some trash out before me and Otis went to the vet. And then we didn't end up doing that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just brought Otis up to see his dad, I guess. But uh, then, uh, so we went yesterday and we decided not to put him back on his steroid and he's just going to go back on his Zyrtec you know to see how that helps because he was taking Zyrtec before and that helped some it wasn't as good as a steroid but it definitely helped so uh yeah so then yesterday we went to the vet and golly where am I going so yeah while we were at the vet um I mentioned that he had um a couple of new lumps one was by his winky area and uh Then one was uh, in his armpit. The one by his winky wasn't hard, so I wasn't super concerned about it, but uh, still wanted to get it checked. So when his armpit was hard, so that was kind of important. I was concerned that it was cancer because fatty tumors are always soft and movable, and this one was like hard, hard and solid. So got all that checked, tested. And uh, yeah, I got the results back today. So it's just a cyst in his armpit, no cancer, no infection. So I'm like, yes. So I didn't think it was um, just because he's been acting completely like himself and it's not small and it was in his armpit. So it's not somewhere that I touch all the time. So I didn't, I don't know how long it's been there. I just found it last week while I was out of town. So he's been totally normal. Um, I think he's slowing down a little bit. You know, he's gradually been slowing down over the past few years, but he's still eating, still drinking, still getting up and down the stairs for the most part. So sometimes he needs a little bit of help, but um, like on our bigger steps, like our um, in our house, we have steps that turn and the steps up to the landing. Um, there really should be three there, but we don't really have space to put three steps out. So it has two taller steps and he has trouble with those, but the other ones are fine, so. Sometimes he needs help to the landing and then he'll do the rest of the stairs. So, so yeah. And then uh, back to Sunday. So yeah, I don't know. Me and Caleb and John were all in here, you know, sanding away. I'm sure y'all saw me sanding over here in this same spot. Um, I was wearing a shower cap if y'all were wondering. I'm just to um, try to protect my hair from getting all dusty because I'm not, I haven't washed it. So I didn't want to get dusty. So I'm going to wash it today. So that's why I'm not wearing it, but um so yeah, and then, I don't know, Caleb's dad fell through the hole on the floor, which uh, I don't know, Caleb and I are both super careful about it. John is too, I guess he just forgot it was there while he stepped back, so I don't know. And then the medallion got broken and uh, yeah, Caleb was very upset and while he was, you know, having his moment, I was like, okay, well, you know, let me see if I can help him feel better and pick all these pieces up and lay out these blankets that I got at the Goodwill that we have sitting in the parlor. Um, lay all those out and try to set it up and see how much we have because if we have a good amount I'm sure we can get it replicated and so I did that and that was that was helpful um and you know he's just upset that it's not the original which I totally understand you know like when I was little 
Um, I had a stuffed animal. It was a puff -a lump a pink bunny puff -a lump if y'all remember those. Um, and their name was Pinky, and one day I lost Pinky in a store somewhere. I set her down, and I forgot about her because I carried her everywhere. I was probably like three or four. And uh, I don't know. I think my mom got me a replacement, but it just it wasn't Pinky. You know what I mean? And like I don't know, like it's not not knocking anybody, but you know when some people um, get older, or you know they have an anniversary or whatever, like a wedding anniversary, they'll upgrade their wedding ring and just have a whole new ring. And like to me. I wouldn't do that because my wedding ring is the ring that I got married with. You know what I mean? So it's just one of those things. Like I totally get where he's coming from. It's not the original. It doesn't mean as much. You know what I mean? So I understand, but you know, it is what it is. So it's just something that we have to deal with, you know, learn from it and uh, do better in the future. So, so yeah, we're going to, we're going to move past that. It's, you know, it is what it is. You can't change it. So. And then uh, I'm like, what day of the week is it? It's Monday. So, uh, so yeah, then no, no, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday today. Okay. I don't even know anymore. Um, so, uh, Sunday night, I'm at home, you know, we had had a tough day with the medallion and, uh, yeah. So then I get a call from Caleb and I'm like, Hey, what's up? And he's like, you need to get up here right now. Bring every towel we have in the house. Bring a fan. Bring me a change of clothes. I'm going to have to go out on the roof. we got a waterfall. And uh, coming in the house. And uh, I'm going to have to go out there and unplug the gutter. So I get here. And I'm not freaking out. Um, it, you know, I know it's not good. But, like, <sighs> freaking out isn't going to help anything. And, like, as a person who freaks out, you know what I mean? Like, about certain things. Like, not all the time. Not every time something goes wrong, but like I am definitely a freak out type of person. I was like, uh-uh, he's freaking out. You got to keep it cool, girl. So I get up here and he's like, there's so much water coming into the dining room. So we, I go in there and I see, yes, there's some water coming in, but it's not like as bad as he made it out to be. And then he goes upstairs here into the library and literally the window was like, it was like a waterfall. Like, I am not kidding. Like it was just pouring in, absolutely pouring in. So yeah, so he's sitting there holding a tote. Let me show, let me show y'all the tote actually. And then we'll go up on the roof. So yeah, water is just absolutely pouring in here. Like not, no joke. And it looks like the window's open up there. It's just a shiny reflection. The window is sealed up there. So it was coming in from like here. Uh, yeah. So let me show you the bucket of water. Okay. Sorry. It's kind of icky and like insulation came in, but like it's kind of hard to see because it's, di it's dim in here in the hall, but yeah, a lot of water in there. So yeah, let me show you the roof. Okay. So he's holding the tote and he's like, I got to get up on the roof and clear the gutters. And I'm just like, screw it. I'm going up there. So he's holding the tote because he, he has to hold it. And uh, so I go up there. He doesn't even know I'm coming up here. And I just open the window and go out. So let me show you. Okay, so this is the window that we use to access the second floor roof. So I come out, well, I come up here and I can see that there is another waterfall right here. So let me hop out here. So what is happening is this gutter is also full and it's pouring over directly here. So as soon as I came out here, and I'm just in my pajamas and a hoodie because it was like 9.30 at night. So I come out here, soaked immediately from that waterfall. And I'm like, okay, I gotta get these gutters cleared. So we haven't been up here since then, but huh. so I come over here and you know, yes, there are walls on the sides of the roof, but back here it is uh, just open. <laughs> so I come over here and I'm like, okay, so there's gutter guards. And here, so you can see, these are absolutely pine needles. And I don't understand, I don't know. And see, this is still clogged. I just did what I had to do, you know, at the time. Um. But yeah, don't worry, I'm completely safe right here. Like, I have good balance. I'm not too close to the roof, the edge. So anyways, 
So I come up here and I'm like, obviously it's happening right here. So these are all there and I catch an edge on one of them and I just ripped it off. Like it took a little bit of strength. So I ripped it off and there was a big clog right here. So I ripped that off and uh, cleared what I could and then immediately like the water started moving. So I'm just like, what are the gutter guards doing if there's so much still in there? And I couldn't, this was probably where it was like, I think the downspout's over here, but I can't access that because as you can see, the roof material goes over that. And I was like, this is very precarious. So I can't go over there. I can go here and kind of hold on to the chimney, but over there cannot access. So thank goodness when I did that, it helped a lot. And I also did it over here where I could access. Just straight rip them things off. And, but uh, what is this? Because this, I don't know what kind of tree this is, but this is the only tree that comes over that's like anywhere near. So, no idea. I don't see a pine tree anywhere. I guess there's some over there, but <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. I wasn't scared. I just did what I had to do. So, yeah, we need to get these cleared out um, for the time being until we get bigger gutters. So, I think we're going to get, um, well, we need to figure out a solution, but my thought is have the same kind of gutters, I guess, or maybe a little bit bigger ones and then uh, get a bigger downspout. So I think that there's four inch downspouts. We could do like an eight inch and also this roof all drains right here, tilts back, and it all comes here into this downspout. So I'm assuming that's clogged too. So then all the water from the third floor is coming here onto the second floor and bombarding these gutters into one singular downspout. So it's just not working. We need more downspouts, bigger downspouts. So yes, so I need to clear this stuff up and clear these gutters out, but I'm assuming Caleb will want to help. But yeah, uh, hang on, let me flip it around. So yeah, as I was driving up here, like I didn't know if Caleb was going to go on the roof without me. And I was like, God, I hope I don't come here and find him in the backyard. You know what I mean? Like falling off the roof. So I'm just kind of one of those people that like, I'd rather do things myself because then I don't have to worry about it. Do you know what I mean? Like not because like it's me doing it. So I don't have to worry about him getting hurt because I did it. Do you know what I mean? So I don't know. <laughs> it's just better for me to do things than to worry. So because I am a person with anxiety. So yeah, so that was uh, pretty nerve wracking. But as soon as I did that, the water stopped coming in. So that was awesome. And uh, yeah, I'm just glad I didn't have to worry about him doing it. So <laughs> let's get back to the ending. Okay, so I had, we, it's been a couple hours, but uh, we had to go to the art supply to get Caleb uh, some more of that cardstock stuff for uh, the stencil. And then we had to drop it off and then we went and got some food and now we're at refab. So this will probably be the last portion. It's five o'clock, so I probably won't get any more sanding done today, unfortunately. No. So anyways, we ooh, we are here to try to find some more beadboard because otherwise Caleb has to go to Peoria tomorrow, which is like two and a half hours away. So look at these though. I wonder what these are from. And this tub. Oh my gosh, I would love this tub. It's very, very pricey though. Okay, y'all. Wow. Um, I really want this. 300 bucks. I really want this. Look at that. Oh my. And these still haven't been picked up. They're sold, but they haven't been picked up. I love this one. That would be so nice. And then this is new. I'm assuming it has something it's supposed to sit on. Maybe it's probably that up there. This piece. Because obviously you wouldn't have a drawer right on the floor. Yeah. Oh, it's pretty. Wow. Okay, I'm dying over the inside of this. Look at this. It's like tapestry material. Wow. Okay, Caleb likes it too, but we don't have anywhere to put it. It doesn't fit. It's time for the percolator. It's time for the percolator. <laughs> Throw back to anybody in the Chicago rave scene back in the 90s. Oh. I'm thinking of that City Girls song. 
I was off of that. No. Oh. <laughs> John introduced me to that because I guess he used to drive up to Chicago for raves. Oh, wow. He told me about it. I don't know. <laughs> All right. No beadboard? I mean, there's beadboard over there, and they have some here. It's just, do they have the beadboard we need? Yes. That's interesting. What you got? Just uh, this. Which one? It's a really thin. Oh. It's engineered flooring. It's just really thin strips. Mm. I've seen that in certain houses, but. Hmm. What are these? A bunch of these little dudes. Are these just floors? Um, I don't. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, mm. I mean, it looks like it's just like flooring to me. This is nice. This nice flooring. Um, the only thing with a lot of that is none of it's like quarter sawn, so we have so much quarter sawn. Ooh! Sure Look at all these. It's like wood floor tiles. Those yeah. are cool. This uh, they called this uh, wood carpeting. Wood carpeting. Yeah, we had this is pretty much exactly what's in the house. So really, it's very similar except for a lot thinner. Mm. But it's it's parquet, you know. Parquet. Okay, I mean I didn't know that term. Um, but I've seen it in like uh, like Sears catalogs. Oh. Um, but you'd put um, a, you know like so tongue and groove, right? Yes, you would yes. actually add the tongue to these and oh, click them together. So you don't have to worry about breaking it because you can just put a new one in. You know this stuff. That's actually pretty, pretty handy. Cool. Um, yeah. It's all top nailed too, so it's actually fairly old. Yeah. Um, but it's also three quarter inch, so mm. um, it I makes wonder you think. about the difference in color here. Mm. No. Because it's the same pattern, it's just a different wood. I mean, it's the same wood too. It's just, it is? It, okay, so kind of like our beadboard, how it's the same wood, but some of them are different colors. Well, see, yeah, I mean, look, this. This here, well, no, there's some some uh, quarter sawn. Mm -hmm. We see all the tiger striping in that one. Yeah. That one's got a lot of quarter sawn pieces in it, and mm -hmm. this doesn't. Oh. Um, so it's the way you cut the wood and what you're exposing. Oh, okay. Um, I think that, oh, I'm gonna be mistaken here, I'm sure, but I think that's a lot of the like veins, if you will, that move like water and stuff through the tree. Okay. Is what you're seeing in the tiger striping or something like that. It's a different part of the tree. Okay. But you only get to be cut it one way. Um, okay, so you have to cut it a certain way. But that's a, a more wasteful way, way of cutting it, which is why you don't see it. Oh, it's wasteful. Heard. You don't get as much lumber that way. Heard. Okay. There's so many cool boards here to like make reclaimed furniture out of. Caleb said maybe we'll do something like that in the uh, the basement bar. Don't quote me on that. Don't quote him on that, but maybe. Yeah. Man, if this was like $150, I would buy it. Okay, so no such luck on the beadboard. Wow, it looks like I have like 70s hair. Fair faucet. Um, yeah, no such luck. So I guess Caleb's going to Peoria tomorrow to get that stuff. So yeah, I guess that's going to do it. Sorry, this ended up being a weird video kind of all over the place. But uh, I will see y'all later this week and I hope y'all take care. Okay, bye.